So welcome everybody to this latest video on 162 Maths and in this video we'll be going over a GCSE Maths practice paper on the foundation tier which is classed as set for paper 2 which is a calculator paper. Now before we get started working through this paper just a little reminder that if you want access to the paper all you need to do is just simply click on the link in the description and in the description I'll also include a question breakdown so you can see which topic refers to each question which is going to be useful if you find any of the questions a little bit tricky you can go back and see which topics you probably may need to revise and also include a link to the 162 maths contents page where you can access all the lessons and audits topic tests and also all the other exam paper walkthroughs so let's get started on question one so question one reads what is 18 as a percentage of 72 so for this all we need to do is do 18 over 72 and multiply that by 100 which we can easily do on our calculator so here let's get on my calculator 18 divided by 72 make sure you press equals if not use the fraction button multiply by 100 and we get an answer of 25 so I'm gonna circle the third option moving on to question 2 it says which of these units of volume so it says circle your answers so what we want to circle then is centimeter cubed and cubic meters moving on to question 3a it says which of these values could represent a probability and so probability is a measure between 0 and 1 so the only value that of these that are between 0 and 1 is going to be 0 0.8 Moving on to question 3a, it says, 3b rather, it says a fair ordinary dice is rolled. Circle the probability of rolling a 3 or a 4. Well, how many 3s and 4s are there on a dice? Well, there's one of each, so that's 2 out of 6. And so therefore, it's going to be 2 6. Question 4, it then says simplify. And we've got 12x squared minus 8 squared minus 5x plus 2x. So here we've got x squared, so we just want to simplify the number of x squared that we've got. So we've got 12 take away 4, which is 4x squared. Let's try not write with a highlighter. So that's 4x squared. And then all we then need to do is simplify the number of x's. So it's minus 5 plus 2, which is minus 3x. Then moving on to question 5, it says Bob stacks 20 bricks in one minute. He assumes he can continue at the same rate. He says, I will stack 8,400 bricks in seven hours. Tick one box to show whether he is likely to be accurate. And the question is asking us to make sure that we give working and a reason to support our answer. Now, again, with these particular questions, you always want to try and work it out and then decide which option you want to pick. It's, I don't know why they always set these questions like in this order where you've got to tick a box and then give your reason. It should be the reason and then tick a box, but each to their own. So first of all, what we need to remember is that there are 60 minutes in one hour and in seven hours there's going to be seven times 60 which is 420 minutes then from this what we then want to do is then want to work out how many bricks he's going to stack so that's going to be multiplied by 20 and that does give me an answer of 8400 bricks now in terms of is he going to be doing that for seven hours oh, I don't think he is so I would say that no, he's likely to stack fewer bricks simply because he cannot keep up with the pace for seven hours, which is ridiculous. So I would say something along those lines, he may slow down, is unlikely to speed up uh, consistently. So I would therefore go for the answer of no he is likely to stack fewer bricks also depending on his stacking bricks may fall down so then he has to then pick them back up moving on to question six it says factorize 18x minus 42 plus 32z and y so here what we need to do is think about have we got common letters no so we're just focusing on the numbers so what is the biggest number that goes into both 18 42 and 30 well that's going to be six so then multiplying 6 to get 18, we need 3, so that's going to be 3x. Multiplying 6 by 7 to get 42y. And then multiplying 6 by 5, so that's going to be positive 5z inside our brackets. Moving on to question 7, it says an experiment has four outcomes. It says circle the probability of outcome B. Now with this, when we've got a table that looks like this, all of these probabilities must add up to 1. 
So to work out this missing probability, all I've got to do is one, take away the known probabilities, which if I word that out, it's going to be one minus 0 0.6, which leaves me with an answer of 0 0.4. And so I just need to circle the third option. Moving on to question eight, it says that a triangle ABC is isosceles and it says work out the three possible values of angle B. So if I just take this to let's just write A, B and C. So if I start by saying that these two sides here with an isosceles triangle, two sides have got to be the same. So if those two sides are the same of AC and BC, then A is going to be 56, B is going to be 56, and C is going to be the other angle in which all I've got to do is add 56 plus 56, take away the answer from 180, and I get an answer of 68. So that's one possible outcome I could have. Another possible outcome I could have is if these two sides here are the same. So therefore, that means that this angle is going to be the same as this angle. So if I write ABC, so this time C, A is going to be the unique angle and BC are going to be the same. So here, if I do 180 minus 56 divided by 2, that gives me 62. So these two angles here are going to be 62. And then finally, if... these two sides here are the same then this angle here is going to be 56 so B is going to be the unique angle so A is 56 C is 56 and then to work out B again 180 minus 56 minus 56 leaves me with 68 so the question is asking what are the three possible values of B? So it's going to be 56, 62 and 68. So I just need to write that down. So 56, 62 and 68. And you can write those in any order. Now moving on to question nine, it says complete the pay statement. So for this, for the first bit, what we need to do is we need to multiply the first column by the second column to then work out what the pay is going to be. So for the first one we do 35 multiplied by 14.3 which is 550. Then we do 7 times 18.8 which is 131.60 and then 4 times 100 uh, sorry 21.45 which gives me an answer of 85 pounds and 80 pence. And all we then need to do is add them up. So we've got 500.5 plus 131.6 plus 85.8. And that gives me a total of 717 and 90 pence. Then for deductions, all we need to do is just simply add those numbers up. So I've got £64.80 plus £85.60, which gives me 150 Point four zero, and then for the take-home pay, what I need to do here is just do seven one seven point nine, take away one five zero oh, point four, in which I get an answer of five six seven point five zero. Oh. And again, with the pence, make sure you're having two decimal numbers, two de writing the numbers as two decimal places with a zero if there's only one. Moving on to question 10, let's just zoom in and so you can see a bit more clearer on the screen. So it says work out five and a quarter plus a half times two thirds. It says give your answer as a mixed number. Now, again, I could just simply enter this on the calculator. Now, if you are going to do this on the calculator, make sure that when you enter your fraction button, you are using the mixed fraction or the mixed number function so again how you get that is just press shift and then your fraction button so here I'm entering five and a quarter make sure you're not typing in the fraction button then just scrolling across to five because that will give you a different answer plus and then a half multiplied by two thirds so it should look exactly like that. And so the answer then is 67 over 12. So I'm just going to write that down.
just to start with. And again, as the question's worth two marks, it is really important that you do show a bit of working out. So that's completely disappeared. So let me just enter that in again. And then to get the mix number, all we need to do is just press the SD button or shift and SD. And we've got five and seven twelfths. There we go. Now moving on to question 11, it says in a rectangle there are six masses. 11a says show that the sum of the six masses is 2007.3 kilograms. Now for this what we need to do is we need to convert all the masses into kilograms. So this one's already done for us, this one's already done for us and to convert grams into kilograms what I need to do is divide by 1000 and to get from kilograms to, well I don't need to go the other way and there are in one ton that equals a thousand kilograms so this one here is going to be 0 0.75 kgs this one's going to be 2000 kgs this is going to be 0 0.250 kgs and that's going to be 0 0.300 kgs so to add them all up all I need to then do is add them up so I've got 1 plus 5 plus 0 0.75 plus 2000 plus 0 0.250 plus 0 0.300 and that comes up to a total of 2007.3 kgs. Now again, if you didn't add the zeros, that's absolutely fine because you'd still get the same answer. Moving on to 11b, it says three of the masses have moved from A to B. The mean of the masses in B is now 2.1 kilograms, which three masses moved and it says you must show your work in. Well, if I go back to this table here, the mean is 2.1 kgs and the number of masses we have is 3 and the total weight is going to equal 3 times 2.1 which is 6.3 kgs. So that is the total of the three weights. So what I'm looking for is three of these weights that will add up to 6.3. So here three weights that pick well I'm going to go for one five and three hundred grams so here I'm going to say one kg five kg and the three hundred grams so if I go back here so it's going to be one kg five kg and three hundred grams moving on to question 12 it says I'm thinking of a number it has two digits it has three more than a number that is both a square number and a cube number is the number I'm thinking of a prime number and you must show your working out to support your answer. Now for this if I start by doing the square numbers that are two digits we've got 16, 25, 36, 49, 64 and we've got 81 and that's 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 yep and then for cube numbers We've got 27 and 64. So again, think of a number. It has three more than a number that is both square and a cube number. So for this, we're looking at it having to be 64. So if I then do 64 plus 3, which is 67. And the question is just asking, is this prime? And so all I need to do is just decide whether 67 is prime and yes it is. So then moving on to question 13 it says before an election 23% said they would vote for A, 9% said they would vote for B, 20% said they would vote uh, not vote. It says all of these voted as they said and the rest of the population actually voted for A and B in the ratio of 1 to 2. Who got the most votes? So first of all, let's work out what the rest of the percentage was. So for this, I just need to do 100 minus 23 minus 9 minus 20. And again, if I just quickly do that on my calculator, minus 9 minus 20, I get an answer of 48%. Now, what I then need to do is I then need to split 48% in the ratio of 1 to 2. So here from this we've got A, we've got B, that's in the ratio of 1 to 2. So if three parts 
equals 48. One part is going to equal 16. So here we've got 16% and for B we've got 32%. So what I then need to do is add these percentages to what we've got here. So for A, it's going to be 23 plus 16, which gives me 39%. For B, it's going to be 9% plus 32, which is 41%. And then for no vote, that's going to be the percentage that's left, which is 20%. And there we go. So the question is, who got the most votes? It's going to be B. Then it then says for question 13B, 612 people did not vote. How many people did vote? So if 20% is 612, then 100% is going to be 612 times 5 and 612 times 5 is 3060 and so what we want to know is the people that voted so we just need to do 3060 because remember this is the total that's the number who didn't vote so the voting is going to be 3060 minus 612. And again, typing that straight into my calculator, I get an answer of 2448. Moving on to question 14, it says two rectangles are shown on the grid. And it says two rectangles are congruent. Work out the values of A and B. So if I just zoom out just so we can see the question in its entirety. And congruent basically means that the rectangles are the same size. So if we look at the coordinates that we can see on this rectangle here, we're going from minus six to minus two. So then that means that this length here is gonna be four. And then if we look at the height of that rectangle, that's gonna be the difference in the y coordinates and that's gonna have a difference of three. So the rectangle is four by three. So then from, to work out A, this length here is three squares so if I do four plus three so a equals four plus three which is seven and then to work out b that's going to be using the y ordinate and that's going up four so b is going to be four plus four which is eight so then the values of a and b is that a equals seven and b equals eight Moving on to question 15, it says in a Venn diagram, whole numbers 1 to 12 inclusive, M is a multiple of 3 and F is a multiple factors of 24. Put the numbers of 1 to 12 in the Venn diagram. So if we start by writing the numbers of 1 to 12, including those numbers. Now in terms of M, I'll just do in purple. So M is a multiple of three. So the multiples of three are three, six, nine, and 12. Then I then need to do factors of 24. So factors of 24, numbers that divide into 24, in which I've got those orange numbers. Now the numbers that I've circled in both purple and orange, are the ones that go in the middle. So I've got three, six, and 12. The numbers that are exclusive to purple, which is just nine, goes in this circle here. And the ones exclusive to orange go in the other F. So that's gonna be one, two, four, and eight. Now in terms of the other numbers I've not circled at all, they're the ones that go outside the circles. So that's gonna be five, seven, 10, and 11. And there's my Venn diagram completed. So then for 15b, it says complete the table to show how many numbers are in each part of the Venn diagram. So again, using the Venn diagram, if I just circle this one. So factors of 24 that are also a multiple of three are the middle numbers. So that's these numbers here. So that's going to be three. Then numbers that are factors of 24, but not 
multiples of 3. So factors of 24, but not of these numbers here, in which there are four numbers, in which then factors of 24 altogether there are 7. Then for the others that are not a factor of 24 but are, is a multiple of 3, well there's only one of those numbers, and ones that are neither outside any of those circles, well there's 4 of them. So adding them up, we get five. And then here, adding up the columns, we get the completed table. Moving on to question 16. So let me just zoom in so we can see it a bit more better on the screen. So it says the diagram shows a circle with a radius of seven centimeters inside a square. And the question is asking us to work out the shaded area. Now the shaded area is always the area, not always, but is the area of the big shape, which is the square, minus the area of the circle. Now to work out the area of the circle, well that's pi r squared, and to work out the area of a square, that's base times the height. Now the question is saying that the radius is 12, uh, sorry, 7, so that means that if that radius is 7, then this length here is going to be 7, that's going to be 7 and this is going to be 7 so that means that the rectangle is going to be 14 by 14 and the circle has got a radius of 7 centimeters so to work out the area of the square that's going to be 14 times 14 and then to work out the area of the circle that's going to be pi times 7 squared so then if I type that into my calculator so 14 times 14 is 196 minus 49 pi and if I type this all into my calculator 196 minus 49 pi I get an answer of 42.1 and that's to one decimal place moving on to question 17 let's just zoom in a little bit it says the nth term of a sequence is 3n squared. Work out the value of the 15th term. So for this, that's when n is 15. So that's going to be 3 times 15 squared. So again, typing that straight into the calculator, 3 times 15 squared gives me an answer of 675. Now again, it's really important that you do use the power button on your calculator for this one. So again, 3 times 15 squared gives me 375. Then moving on to question 17b it says what is the position of the term in the sequence that the first one with the value or that is greater than 100. So for this what we need to do is first of all write 3n squared is greater than 1000 and what we then want to do is solve this for n. So we've got n squared is equal to 1000 divided by 3 so n is going to be greater than 1000 the square root of 1000 over 3 and if I do that on the calculator so let's just get that calculator back up so I've got the square root of 1000 over 3 and that gives me an answer of 18.257 so 18.257 so n is an integer because it's got to be a whole number and so the next integer from that number is going to be 19. Moving on to question 18, it says x to y to z is in the ratio of 2 to 3 to 5. Circle the value of x as a fraction of x plus y plus z. So for this, x plus y plus z is going to be those numbers added up, which is 2 plus 3 plus 5, which is 10. And x is equal to 2. So then the fraction is then going to be 2 over 10, which simplifies to be 1 fifth. So I want to circle the first answer. Moving on to 19, 8 says circle the number that is an integer power of 4. So which of these can we divide by 4, let's say, well, to the root of 4. And so if I do 4 to the power of 1, that's 4. 4 to the power of 2, that's going to be 16. So straight away, I can see that the answer is going to be 16. Moving on to 19b, it says work out 5 to the power of 12 
divided by 5 cubed times 5 to the power of 2. So for this, what we need to do is if we now, in terms of this, all we need to then do when we're dividing is take away the powers and when we multiply, we add the powers. So this is going to be 12 minus 3 plus 2. And again, that's going to give me an answer. 12 minus 3 is 9 plus 2 is 11. So the answer then is going to be 5 to the power of 11, which is our fourth option. Moving on to question 20, it says 4,000 invested is invested in a 1.5 compound interest. Show that the value of the investment after two years is 4,120.90 pence. So for this, what we need to then do is use the formula for compound interest. So it's the initial amount multiplied by the decimal multiplier. So here we start with 100%. We're adding 1.5%. So that then becomes 101.5%. And then we want to convert that into a decimal by dividing by 100, which gives me 1.015. So we multiply that by 0 0.15, and then we raise it to the power of the time, which is 2, and type that into my calculator, gives me the answer that they wanted me to show. For B, it then says in the third year of uh, in the third year the interest rate falls to 1.4%. In the fourth year, the interest rate falls to 1.35%. Will the interest for year four be more or less than the interest in year three? So first things first, we know that after two years, we're going to have 4120.8.9.9. So to work out the third year, it's going to be 4120.90 times one point and then this as a decimal multiplier is going to be zero point one point zero one four which if I type that into my calculator four one two zero point nine multiplied by one point zero one four gives me an answer of four one seven nine point five nine two six. Now from this what I then want to do is work out the interest amount. So the interest Earned, and that's going to be this number minus this one. So that's going to be 4179.58.5926 minus 4120.9. And that gives me an interest amount of £57.69. Then for the fourth year, I'm going to have this amount here. So that's 4178.5926. Multiply that by the decimal multiplier. So here it's now going to be 1.0135. And again, working that out. I get an answer of... 4235.0036 and then to work out the interest earned I'm going to take away this number from this number in which I get an answer of 56 pounds and 41 pence so the question is saying which of these two amounts is it well in the do I earn more in the fourth year than I do in the third year? So the answer is going to be less because you earn more in the third year than you do in the fourth year. Moving on to question 21, it says the table summarizes the amount spent by customers in a shop in one hour. And for 21 it says work out estimate of the mean amount spent per customer in one hour. So for this, what we need to do for group data is I need to create a midpoint column. So to find the midpoint, we just add the upper bound and the lower bound and divide it by two. Or you can just do it by looking uh, in which I end up with those values. Now for the last one, because there's no group, I can just leave that one blank, particularly as there's no frequency on there. So the next thing that's left for me to then do is do the f of x. And to work out the fx value, I multiply the second and third column together. So here I've got 18 times 5, which is 90. 15 times 15, which is 225, and 7 times 25, 
which is 175. And to work out the total, adding up the total frequency, well, that's going to be 18 plus 15 plus 7, which is 40. And adding up the total FX, I've got 90 plus 225 plus 175 gives me 490. So the estimated mean is going to be 490 divided by 40. Type that into my calculator, gives me an answer of 12.25. And there we go. It then says for 21B, using the till receipts, the manager works out the actual mean amount spent for each group. Without further calculation, decide whether the actual mean of the 40 customers will be different from the estimate in part A. Now for this, what you need to spot, and it doesn't help that it's on two different pages, but hopefully you can see. So here what we've got is we've got a lower amount here, and we've got a lower amount here than what we used in the table for part A. So that means that we need to tick the box that says lower. And the reason for that is that the estimated mean used higher values for the first group and for the last group, which is 20A to 40. So something along those lines would be fine to get the two marks. Then moving on to question 22, it says work out the value of A and B in this identity. Now for this, what we need to do first is we need to ex expand and simplify this left hand side. So what we end up with is 3AX plus 6 minus 4X minus 4B. And then the right hand side is 11X plus 14. Now the next thing we then need to do is group our X's together. So that's going to be 3AX minus 4X plus 6 minus 4b and that's all equal to 11x plus 14. Now looking at if I just factorize this with regards to x I end up with 3a minus 4 lots of x and I've got 6 minus 4b and again that's all equal to 11x plus 14. Now the next thing for me to then do is compare the coefficients. So here I've got 3a minus 4 equals 11 and I've also got 6 minus 4b equals positive 14. So if I write them out separately, and 6 minus 4b equals 14, what I then want to do is solve these equations. So I've got 3a equals 15, so a equals 5. And then for this one, I take the b over to the other side to make it positive. Take the 14 over to the other side, so I have minus a equals 4b. So b equals minus 2, and there I've got my two values of a equals 5 and b equals minus 2. Now moving on to question 23, we've got to work out the length of x. So this is using trigonometry. So from this we've got theta, which is 20. This is the hypotenuse. This is the opposite. So which trig ratio uses o and h? Well, that's going to be sine. So the formula for sine is this here. So substitute the numbers in, I get sine 20 equals x over 12. So x is going to be 12 multiplied by sine 20 because I'm taking this 12 over to the other side by multiplying. In which typing this all into my calculator, I get 12 times sine 20, which gives me an answer of 4.1 and that's to one decimal place. Now if you Rounding's a bit sketchy. There's nothing in the question that says what they want to round it to. So if you don't want to risk your rounding errors, then just simply copy the answer on your calculator. Then for the last question, it says write down 140 as a product of their prime numbers in index form. Now for this, do this without using your calculator. It's I'd probably recommend doing a factor tree. And if I just do one possible combination of this, I end up with this. So I've got 2 times 2 times 5 times 7, join the 2's together, so I get 2 squared multiplied by 5 multiplied by 7, and jobs are good in. Alternately, what I could do is use the calculator, so if I just press 140, press equals, then press shift, and then fact, it comes up with the answer already. So for a last question, that's pretty easy.